Victor. Hi, Annette. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. This is Africa News. And the International Criminal Court backs off its insistence that it try a former Libyan spy chief. After that, Al Sanusi will face justice at home. Also, this comes as African foreign ministers gather in Addis Ababa to discuss if they even want to be on board with the World Court. And though Nigeria is oil rich, it's rice poor. Critics say the continent's second economy should be growing its own. First up, following his abduction on Thursday, Libya's prime ministers lashed out at militia, calling his kidnapping an attempted coup. Ali Zidane today warned that certain armed groups of former rebels want to destabilize the country, terrorize the government and bring about turmoil like that seen in Afghanistan or Somalia. Since the 2011 toppling of the Gaddafi regime, the country's new leaders have been struggling to rein in former revolutionary fighters. In a sign of the tenuous security in the country, a car bomb went off on Friday morning outside of the Swedish and Finnish consulate in east, the eastern city of Benghazi. No one was hurt, but the city, the birthplace of the recent revolution, has been the target of several attacks on diplomatic missions. Despite the concerns about the rule of law, today judges at the International Criminal Court ruled that Libya's justice system was sufficiently fair for it to try a former Gaddafi-era spy chief on crimes against humanity charges. The ICC had been pushing to have Sanusi handed over to its custody. Lawyers have slammed the decision to allow the case to be tackled in Libya. When Libyan rebels toppled the Gaddafi regime, Abdullah al-Sanusi fled to Mauritania. He was later arrested and brought back to Libya. Both the International Criminal Court and Tripoli had demanded presiding over the trial of Gaddafi's former spy chief, though The Hague has now backed down. The judicial system in Libya is capable and willing of uh, genuinely carrying out this prosecution or this investigation against Mr. Abdullah uh, Il Senussi. The ICC's founding statute says it can't try a suspect if they'll receive a fair hearing in a domestic court. It means al Sanusi will face charges at home, though the ICC's decision can be appealed if he appeared not to be receiving a free trial. No change for Saif al-Islam, however. Gaddafi's son is still wanted in The Hague. The chamber highlighted that Saif al-Islam uh, uh, Gaddafi, there was no uh, way to secure a legal representation for him in Libya, while for Mr. Sanusi there are several lawyers who are proposing to represent him. A Tripoli court to look at charging Saif al-Islam on October the 24th, along with Sanusi and 18 other former regime figures. However, he's still being held by a rebel group in western towns in Tan, with no sign they're prepared to hand him over to Libyan authorities. Well, the ICC's decision to allow Libya jurisdiction over Sanusi comes as foreign ministers from the African Union meet in Addis Ababa to discuss calls for a withdrawal from the International Criminal Court. Last month, Kenyan Parliament passed a motion to pull out, yesterday, caused for the ICC's case against its president, Uhuru Kenyatta, to be dropped. Well, the World Court's been accused of being biased against African defendants, a charge it strongly denies. However, Nairobi's impatience with it has found echoes across the continent. Far from promoting justice and reconciliation and contributing to the advancement of peace and stability in our continent, the court has transformed itself into a political instrument targeting Africa and Africans. This unfair and unjust treatment is totally unacceptable, and that's why we have been expressing our serious concerns against the ICC. Well, Aaron Masho is in Addis Ababa. He tells us that the speech from Dr. Gebrehesus pretty much set the tone for the day. Today's meeting, of course, was held among the ministers of foreign, uh, foreign affairs of the 54 uh, of the African Union's member countries, and is taking place ahead of a gathering of heads of state set to take place tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, and as you mentioned, of course, the summit is called for, uh, for with the purpose of uh, examining the relationship between uh, uh, the AU and the head base, head base court as ICC prosecutions are underway against President uh, Kenyatta and his deputy, Ruto. Uh, Kenyatta, Kenyatta and his deputy, of course, are accused of uh, 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 masterminding the wave of violence that struck Kenya uh, three years ago that claimed the lives of uh, 1,200 people. Uh, and 
And this meeting in Addis Ababa is yet to conclude until now, uh, but a number of motions have been discussed, including a referral of the cases. Uh, up until now, we have spoken. Um, uh, we, we, we've spoken to a number of ministers, uh, and, and they, 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 they've been unanimous in their uh, in their criticism of the ICC uh, on grounds of bias. Uh, and they say, truth to this, is that uh, uh, all uh, that all of his charges so far are uh, are Africans. Well, Nicolas Germain from My Africa Desk tells us more about why, after 11 years with working with African nations, the ICC's relationship with them has suddenly taken this turn for the worse. Since 2002, you've had only African leaders who've been either charged or judged uh, by the ICC. We think, of course, of the Congolese militia leader, Thomas Lubunga. We think of the Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir, who's been charged, or the former Ivorian president, Laurent Gbagbo. So this has provoked some strong reactions in Africa. For example, in South Africa, the ruling party, the ANC, says it believes the court is sometimes trying to uh, provoke regime change, for example, in Kenya. You have the Ethiopian prime minister who says, I quote, that there is, uh, the court is hunting Africans. You have the uh, Rwandan president, Paul Kagame, who says the court is trying to humiliate Africans. Uh, you'll see that last year the court uh, tried to introduce a new prosecutor from Africa, from Gambia, Fatou Ben Souda, but relations haven't improved since then. One thing uh, worth noticing is that despite all this criticism, half of the investigations launched by the ICC are launched at the request of African nations. Now, there have actually also been some very high-profile African voices who've, who've made it clear that they don't think that turning away from the ICC is a very good idea. Absolutely, and some observers are saying that uh, while some presidents seem to be against it, the people are for it. They know that this court was created to judge criminals who couldn't be judged in their countries because their legal systems were too lacked means and were too uh, fragile. Uh, for example, recently we heard Desmond Tutu, the Nobel Peace Prize uh, uh, winner, he said that without this court, the world would be a more dangerous place. And the, this week we heard Kofi Annan, the uh, former uh, leader of the United Nations, and uh, he said that for him this debate at the African Union was more about protecting presidents than victims. And he said, I quote, that if they vote to leave the ICC, uh, that will be a badge of shame for Africa. Okay, now more African migrants have met a tragic end in Italian waters. Dozens died on Friday when a boat carrying at least 250 people capsized in the sea between Sicily and Tunisia. Several of the victims were children. It's the second such tragedy a little over a week following the deaths of at least 339 people uh, in the trying to sail to the Italian island of Lampedusa. In Egypt, thousands of supporters of toppled President Mohamed Morsi took to the streets on Friday to commemorate the 100 days since his army backed ouster. Police used tear gas and the military fired into the air to disperse rallies in Cairo and Alexandria. At least one demonstrator was reportedly killed in the province in the Delta. A gathering in the capital's iconic Tahrir Square was called off following violence there last week in which dozens were killed. Now, Nigeria's economy is on the up, with a growth rate of between 6 to 7 percent, well ahead of the global average. But despite its vast oil wealth, the country still imports huge amounts of rice. Some entrepreneurs are, though, hoping to change that. Claire Murphy tells us more. By 2050, it's estimated the population of Nigeria will grow to the third largest in the world after India and China. But even now, Africa's second largest economy struggles to feed its 169 million people. Each year, it has to import over 2 million metric tons of rice. It's a trend the country wants to reverse. The government is attempting to encourage private investment, and over a dozen new rice mills have sprung up across the country. One of the newest and largest is located here in Kawara State. We're paving the way for other private investors, private companies to follow. Um, we don't plan to feed the whole of Nigeria, but someone needs to take the first steps to feeding our country. Our country is not sustainable. Um, we have no food security. The mill has an annual capacity of 30,000 tonnes and aims to increase local output and improve quality. There is a lot of imported rice in the country. And if our rice is not better than the imported rice, we will not be doing our job. We'll be producing rice as clean, as uh, nicely parboiled, as nicely polished as the imported rice. 
Local farmers currently earn up to $1,000 a year, but with the new mill they hope to do even better. I am expecting that if they can take it from us, the more profit, the more profit it will be for me. And it's hoped enterprises like this one will not only benefit the local community, but also help to make Nigeria self-sufficient in rice production by 2015. That wraps up Africa news from me, but I will be back with more on Monday. Thank you, Georgia Calvin-Smith, with that wrap of today. the day's news out of Africa. And do stay with us because we'll have more news and headlines after a short break, including the latest on that boat tragedy off the island of Lampedusa. We're now hearing from the Prime Minister of Malta that at least 27 people have died. I'll be back after a short break. Do stay with us here on France Van Catch. <laughs>